Well, thank you immensely for remaining with us. I still have Mr. Gulakis' guest on the program. Let's turn to political matters now. The PDP, your party, held its elective convention in December. Uh, ballots were cast, they were counted. So to the casual observer, voting took place. And some people actually describe it as one of the best and the most democratic ever in the history of the PDP. Do you share this opinion? Well, are you sure PDP is still my party? I thought you are a member of the PDP. I was a member of the PDP because the day the party came out officially to condemn the approval or release of one billion dollars to fight insurgency in the notice, that was the day I left the PDP. Did you make that official? Does the world know this? Well, it is not for the world to know. It is about me and maybe my supporters. So officially, I can, I can quote you on this. That you you're can no quote me anywhere. The day the PDP officially and Governor Wiki, who is the leader of the party now, assisted by Governor Ufayashi, came out to condemn in no small terms, in a very strong terms, the approval of one billion dollars to fight insurgency in the notice was the day I left the party within me. Because I cannot see myself. I cannot see myself being a member of a political party who is vehemently opposed to the fight against insurgency in my region. And in Nigeria in general. Politics is about service. It's about people. If they do not see what my people are going through in the Northeast, if they have failed to appreciate the trauma, the destruction of life and property in my region, the Northeast, and to oppose the approval of $1 billion to fight this insurgency in my region, that day I reassessed my continued participation as a member of the political party. And I came to the irresistible conclusion that no, I cannot continue in this vein. Would that be the only reason, or perhaps this is also a follow-up to your feelings about the... It was the last throw that broke the camel's back. Or were there other issues you had with the There PDP? are a lot of issues, impunity within the party. Impunity. Even in the national convention that you are trying to suggest, some people voted and... Uh, people won election. You saw live that some of the candidates stormed out of the part of the convention square because they were not allowed the election or the convention was not free, transparent and fair. It was skewed in accordance with the dictates of the leader of the party. Are you talking about the unity supposed unity list? That was the list. Even before the election, when you saw the unity list before two, three days before the election, did you see single change in that unity list? If you prove, you can prove me wrong. Show me one single name in that list that was changed. I challenge anybody. Lists like that are said to be product of consensual ar ar arrangement among blocks within the party interest. Is that so undemocratic? It's undemocratic. People, then why did you allow others to buy the forms, spend their money, two million, three million, to buy forms, to participate? Allow the delegates to make their choice, make your campaign, not, not force people on, on, on them. This has been the issues bedeviling PDP, and it was one of the issues that saw the defeat of PDP in 2015. But we also saw the, 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 the leadership of the PDP quickly set up a reconciliation committee to go around and appease or maybe speak to members. Yeah. Where are we on that? I don't know. I don't know. Because it means the reconciliation has totally failed. You have seen mass exodus from PDP. You haven't been National Assembly? You haven't been members? contacted by any body? What? No, I have not. As I speak to you, nobody has contacted me about PDP. Or, uh, in fact, 
by my contribution in PDP since 1998 to the time Moazu resigned as national chairman. And all the processes where I mobilized people from the notice to tell the national leadership this particular chairmanship is for our zone, the notice. Let somebody from the Northeast occupy this pending national convention when we will elect our chairmanship. It fell on deaf ears. To the time I went to court and obtained judgment, and the judgment was clear. It was either me as the national chairman, the plaintiff, or anybody from the Northeast. They moved quickly and invited, literally invited Sheriff to be the national chairman. It will look like you never got over that. You're still pained about those incidences of those No, I'm, you are asking me what were the issues, apart from the last straw that broke the camel's back. Mm. I am narrating the issues. Yet all these things, we have been patient, thinking, praying, believing, and trusting that the party will do the right thing. Nigeria needs a vibrant opposition. As a democratic country, a country ruled by rule of law, by constitution. It needs a vibrant political party as an opposition so that Nigerians, as citizens, will be given alternative. If party A fails, they will switch their allegiance and support and vote to party B. Like in US, Democrats, Republicans. Like in UK, conservatives and what have you, Labour. So what I am saying is that this impunity never abated. Instead, it was taken to the highest level. And you have seen mass exodus. Look at what happened in the, in the kitty. Even those that were in the leadership, in the caretaker committee, came out publicly to say, if the party does not take time and stop this impunity of the governor in the kitty state, then the kitty should kiss by. A PDP should kiss by to it. What? So what I am trying to say is that a political party that has been regionalized, in fact limited to a state and not a national party now, cannot give a vibrant opposition. We saw uh, former Vice President Atiku Abubakar left the PDP, uh, the APC, I beg your pardon, to the PDP. Right. If you are no more a member of the PDP, have you made up your mind where you're going? Well, talking about the former vice president, Alaji Akiku Abubakar, the wazir in Adama, he has left the, his party, the ruling party, to the PDP. I believe that Atiku did not know the inner workings of the present PDP. I believe he did not analyze, he was not properly briefed on the inner workings of what is happening in PDP. If he were, then to me, he must have taken a wrong decision, a wrong step. People like us, I, on principles, on principles, like I said, I have my reasons for leaving PDP. And I've said it, and I've told you, it's not about, it's about myself, about my conviction, and maybe my supporters. You are and let me tell you, just on the 31st, I had a meeting with all the structures in Adama State. I threw it open to them. I told them my reasons. And they unanimously agreed and decided on that day that we must leave PDP. As to where we are going, as to where we are going, we have analyzed all the other 67 political parties that are registered. And from the grave van, more are coming. But I have not seen a political party that can win a national election. And I have been in this game since 1990. And I have been actively participating since 1990. And by my analysis, I have not seen in all these 67 political parties that can form national government. Mm -hmm. I don't know what happens tomorrow. There may be some alignments, realignments tomorrow. But as today, as of today, I have not seen 
any of these political parties forming a national government. But be that as it may, mm. our people in the state have decided that when we leave PDP, we are likely, we are set, we are likely to move to APC. Thank you very much for coming on Hard Copy, Mr. Ahmed Golak. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. That's the program tonight. I'd like to thank you for watching, and of course, we'll be delighted to hear from you. Please share your thoughts with us using the handles on your screen. I'm Ibrahim Adra. It's bye for now.